So, Wendy, we turn this over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think that I have been talking about the elements of this presentation since I got here. And um, so I hope that it's not too repetitive, and I do hope that you ask questions. Um, I think this kind of connects well to what Jonathan talked about this morning. Um, I hope it's not too philosophical, and so uh, please stop and ask questions, because I am in my own world, and because we don't have like a center for teaching and learning, and, and everyone in library and IT is very much generalist, and I think I should point out that last night when you showed those, you calculated those ratios of staff to faculty, ours was the highest, it was 13.4 to 1, so we do what, whatever is asked of us all the time. So, um, and so if we don't have a perfect model, uh, no one. Okay, so this is the Paul Barrett Junior Library where the ITS is housed, or I should say, I didn't really think about this, but we have, IT has, uh, is over the media center where equipment is checked out, equipment is booked through EMS, those reservations are pulled and the equipment gets um, reserved and checked out through them. Uh, the help desk is there, a circulation desk is there, um, and so we're all in one building. Our CIO is also in this building, the head of IT and the head of library. So it was designed um, for the divisions to be merged. It was designed to house that. It was built in 2005. Okay, so here's some background. The library and ITS departments combined in name in 1999 when Bob Johnson became the VP for Student and Information Services. That's his current title. I don't know what it was when he came. Um, he is also connected with student affairs at this point. Around 2003, the IT department got a help desk, and there was one person in charge. So the first step was probably what you guys already are familiar with, uh, using a ticketing system, making sure that people were not just calling their friends, you know, that was the very beginning of making sure the flood, the workflows were there. And then in 2005, the Barrett Library was built, the help desk was reinvented to truly be combined. It was an opportunity to do this when the physical space um, was completely uh, built from scratch, from, you know, a brand new library. So at that point in 2005, student workers and librarians began staffing the desk. The head of our library at the time, Lynn Blair, insisted that librarians staff this desk and librarians only. That decision has held for the last eight years or so. I should say here that at the beginning, it was interesting because <coughs> it, it started to be implemented, but the student workers were handling the IT questions and the librarians were told to staff this desk that they were still doing traditional library reference and seeing the desk as a reference desk because there, there was no change in job descriptions necessarily. And so we started with an idea, but just because you have that physical desk doesn't mean everybody's going to buy in. So um, before requests came by phone, in person, by email, according to who you knew, not what you knew, um, both ways. It was, you know, who the faculty knew and were comfortable with, and also um, with the librarians staffing the desk, but the IT people still there. People, it was very fragmented. Um, it was individualized. There weren't clear priorities and no process or collaboration. That's basically, I think, everybody understands that. So I wish this weren't so, so dark, but it's a, it's, if you want to see it on the computer, you can see the details. The desk has three, there are three stations, three seats, and it's wood and everything is the collegiate gothic style at Rose, and so it's very fancy, which I think makes it a little bit unapproachable. Mm -hmm. I think it looks a little too fancy. We have tours constantly, prospective students constantly come through, and um, I try to make eye contact and say hello and say mm -hmm. welcome, and I really like the sign on the reference desk in your library, please interrupt, you know, because <laughs> we kind of look like we're very important and <laughs> and I don't, I don't like that. You know, it's, it's not good. And it's, uh, we sit at a height where we're low, and as people are walking, they are looking um, at us, and we're looking down usually at a screen, and so we have to make a concerted effort to look up at people. I kind of wish we were on elevated stool so we were at eye level. It makes a huge difference. It really, really does. Um, so after. All the requests became centralized. That means, like I, I've been saying this, 
everything comes, we're kind of like, a, we are kind of like a triage station. And uh, so anything comes to us, password resets, I can't get on the wireless, mm -hmm. um, faculty come, I want to set up a course in Moodle, I don't know how. Uh, I mean, I'm just throwing some things out there, but it goes from deep, complex things to, um, you know, where is the bathroom? It's all this one place. Um, there's one email and one phone number, so everybody gets told, help desk at roads.edu. That is, that's, that's very nice. And then there's a record of requests for the chronology, and items can be prioritized. And the IT and library people can see all of these things. Do you also get classroom emergency? Yes. Calls, you and, do. Yes, and I'm glad you asked that because it's the hardest, it's, it's a piece that we've got to work on at Rhodes because somebody was saying they have like a 10 to 15 minute uh, you know, response time. We have one person in IT that's the media services person and he has student workers, but I work the desk every Monday, I'm scheduled Monday, and inevitably, I mean, I tell the students that work with me that on that morning, you know, we got to be ready because an angry faculty member who is losing precious class time is going to call. And my workaround is to have, we have in our back pocket one uh, classroom in the library where they can move. But usually they don't want to because that's a different building. Um, and I will walk over if I need to, but that is not really my job. And we can't do that all the time. But if someone is completely, you know, if it's a customer service kind of issue, we, we will walk over there. I actually ride, ride bikes over to another building to, to see. But I take these issues to the IT meeting. I go to the IT weekly meetings and the library weekly staff meetings. Um, there, the three of us who are currently work this information services job and there's a vacant position, we are have a foot in both departments. It's on one division. So, but your question, yes, that is where they call if the projector is not working, if somebody's unplugged everything over the weekend, um, and sometimes we can fix that. We have access to the room controls there. We can get our room controls and help them if they're just they don't understand how to make the DVD work or whatever. So, any other questions about? I mean, everything goes there. We prefer that. Um, there are people who call the desk and say, "Will you transfer me to Joe? Will you transfer me to Joe?" So, and we, we really do try to politely say, what's your need? Maybe we can help you here. Um, maybe that person's uh, not here right now. Okay, so, yeah. Do, do, the, do the administrative computing questions come through you too? Yeah. Like, <coughs> How do, I need a new, I mean, we get everything. Like, we need something new in this department, and the ticket gets assigned to Charlie Lemon, the director of IT. I should disclose, I should disclose, um, my husband is the associate director for IT. We both have library degrees. So the philosophy runs deep that this stuff all works together. Mm -hmm. And um, I was hired because I'm qualified, but I think that they lucked out that they got someone who kind of understands the vision. I, I think, I don't know how people would feel about that. But we had different people in this position, and I was off doing some other kinds of library work for a while. and. Uh, decided when a position came open that I would like to, you know, put my skills to the test, learn more about IT that I wasn't so familiar with, and um, try to make these connections with faculty that people were having trouble making. So, um, okay, so if I go over this, so everyone has one contact point. We see the range of questions and how they're interrelated, and if I just like put that one in red, neon, blinking, like that's what Jonathan was talking about, and that's our biggest strength and I can talk about the weaknesses for the rest of the day. <laughs> um, and so technology and information literacy are blended at this mm. point. There are no clear lines. I mean, that's what we're talking about. There are no clear lines. So for us, like the example with the physics professor, we have other things like that as well. Somebody just wants to do something, so hopefully we can facilitate. The, the places where I think we're weak is that we don't have people who can just sit around all day and try the new technology. I'm busy doing this, so if I want to really learn, you were talking about different apps and stuff, and I'm like thinking, I should know about all these apps, but really what I need to do is just the, the basic uh, meat and potatoes of making sure our faculty all know the tools that we already have, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of you know, variety of the different departments on who's using the tools and who's not. And I've also learned, I should stop here from the slideshow, in the last year our president, Bill Trout, um, started something called the Common Table, and this is kind of a big concept. 
there's a common table with just like 12 people, faculty, uh, board members, students, staff, and the president who have given these initiatives each semester. There are themes each semester. So the last semester, I served on the common table for teaching and learning. So what that meant was there was a group of people that were um, teaching and learning theme people, and we broke out into groups of six. Um, and so my group had two staff, two faculty, and two students. And, but there were uh, two other teaching and learning groups. Sometimes we would meet all 18 of us, and sometimes we would meet in smaller groups. And we had to write some recommendations that ended up getting taken to the board of trustees. So the faculty got kind of freaked out because they were like, how come this group that the president um, created is going to tell us how to teach? And we were not doing that. We, our initiatives were uh, all about more communication. We don't have to teach any teaching and learning centers, so how do we make things like that happen on our campus? So one thing that grew out of that is this, this long-named teaching and learning in the 21st century working group, which I'm part of the steering committee for, and this is hopefully to exchange ideas. And I'm excited because our registrar is involved, some people from admission are involved, and they are looking at overall what student expectations are with technology. Um, and so it's not like pedagogy so much, but it could be that. People are giving little brief presentations about how they use technology, apply it in their classroom, success stories, so that maybe we can get more going. What we heard, what, the reason I brought this up at this point is what I heard in uh, my little common table is that any professor who had not um, reached tenure, had not gained tenure yet, is not interested in spending their time, and we haven't talked about this at all, but I don't know anything about this. Not, they've got to focus on their research and they've got to focus on getting tenure, so they're not interested in uh, capturing their lectures, so maybe, maybe some of them are if they've come from that, but they are so focused on that there's no time for this and they cannot put it in their um, list of accomplishments. It, it doesn't matter to them. If we even polled like Moodle users. We found that there are more Moodle users who, who are tenured um, than not. Like people just don't have time to mess with this. Or they've been trained in their discipline. This is what you do to get tenure. And this is what you don't do. Can, can we just ask that question here? Do, is your tenure so focused on research at your institution that you would agree with the statement that Wendy just made? Yes. Yes, at Southwestern? Oh, yeah. We actually changed the language in our faculty handbook last spring to give credit for doing these types See, of things. That's so. in discussion, and that's what this common table has brought about some interesting things. Uh, another thing that's sort of related is that our registrar just told us in the last of these um, working group meetings that when tra transfer credit, traditionally at Rhodes, online courses are not granted transfer credit is not granted. So she said people come with this transfer credit and there's no notation on there about yeah. how much of it is online, if it's blended, if it's what it is. It, you know, and for a lot of people that's not there's no distinction anymore. So these but are all issues. Yeah, so at Rollins your statement is not true. It's not true. It is not true. We we I are agree. we the tenure process is driven by teaching. Mm -hmm. Research is required, and there is a research requirement and all of that, but absolutely the very first criteria is teaching, mm -hmm. and so the, the untenured faculty are very willing to try things. That changes everything. It, it could change everything, because it's extremely, to my sense is extremely traditional at Rhodes, the, the right. process you go through, and I think... What's Furman? I don't know if I could accurately answer that question. From, from what I've heard, research is extremely important. Yeah. Yeah. Trinity? I'm not too sure on that one. Just it's given. I mean, yeah. Pat, I think for all of them, that teaching is there. But I'm sorry, if you haven't if you haven't done published research on a national level, you're not going to get tenure. So, I mean, you can. So, if you had done all that and had lousy teaching evaluations, you're not going to get tenure. Mm -hmm. But right. sort of. Yeah, so but I think there's an emphasis difference. I mean, there's is, still an emphasis the difference. The teaching is first, but you're absolutely, if you were just an outstanding teacher and you have, you really haven't done national research, you're not going to make it. Well, yeah, yeah, yes, but I mean, when I was in Richmond, the emphasis is research. You know, uh, but at Rollins, it's a different emphasis. Yeah. What I mean, they're talking about is what Rhodes needs to have. People need to be given permission 
to work on these other pieces and have something to show for it. Right. Because they're saying that with, with the current, like I don't know the language of the tenure requirements, but the current language is that this is just not counted. Right. It's yeah. not oh, that's taken into that's yeah. the, yeah. it's not taken into the whole evaluation. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's Isn't that the same problem with interdisciplinary collaboration? Amazing. They don't necessarily yeah. get credit mm -hmm. from their department mm -hmm. yes. for the projects they did with environmental mm -hmm. studies or chemistry. It seems like we do better with the interdisciplinary stuff at Rhodes. And I really wish a faculty person that had more knowledge about that was were here because I, this is what I'm hearing. Uh -huh. The other issue too with the tenure process is um, remaining competitive outside your institution. Mm -hmm. So you institutionally you may agree with this, but right. I just yeah. want to say at Center, we're like Rollins, we're teaching, and all of our faculty, except for the first year, we have these standing committees, and every faculty member needs to be at least on one committee, and that's just part of their requirement mm -hmm. on there. So, okay. But just to go, to make sure I finish with the pros, one of the other really nice ones is that we don't bounce people around. We take in their question, mm -hmm. we keep them there. Um, servers is not a perfect ticketing system, but like I said, and I talked with my husband before I came, and he said one of the things about, one of the drawbacks we have is that it's really hard to do analytics on this desk and the stuff that we take on this, the questions we answer, how we answer them, and all of that, because sometimes tickets will stay open for a month mm -hmm. or longer, or we'll close them and reopen them because we come back to revisit a problem someone's having that we didn't solve on, you know, because we're not, it's not like, um, are you mm -hmm. um, what you said about the doctor, it's like we are right. not just throwing pills at people. Right. We mm -hmm. want to see the whole uh, problem. And I thought that was a good analogy. We're not just saying like, oh, take this for your headache. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we want to try to solve it all together. Okay, so I think I've said some of this too. So student workers have to be trained in many areas. Um, Professional staff has to be trained in many areas. We have to be willing to learn many things in many areas. We, we have to communicate with each other. If somebody knows something really well, uh, we've got to share what we know. Um, some of our librarians are upstairs and we have these cubicles. Our, my cubicle is in the information commons area. So I get called on a lot because I'm right next to the printer and the copier. I'm right near our bibliographic instruction lab. And so I've, I'm an outward facing person. So is our assistant director and another information services librarian. But one of our information services librarians is behind the circuit desk like door and wall. And then we've had librarians down with IT, which is good because they can ask IT questions, but it's just we have cubes in different places. And they're flexible, supposedly, but they haven't, they haven't moved since we've been there. But as you <laughs> added, you know, I'm like, taking my cue down. I wish it had a ceiling on top because I can't even call to make a doctor's appointment because they're, you know, like I'm in the, I'm in the main area of the library, which is good and bad. Um, when I'm not at the desk, I'm still available. But, uh, but we have so many staff that need to be visible and available, and there are not enough cues on that main floor. So we're, but we are all mixed together. It can, it can definitely be unstructured. It's hard to have reporting or analytics because a lot of the in-person questions and the traditional reference questions, we still report those on a clipboard. We still put little hash marks for every time somebody asks for more paper in the printer mm -hmm. and things like that. So that's something that we really need to solve because we really need more uh, assessment of what's happening here because everything's happening here. Um, staff has to buy into this philosophy and take responsibility to make this desk work. There are still people. There are still librarians who are not assigned to work this desk, um, and I think that that just has to do with personalities and history. Uh, the archivist works the help desk. Mm -hmm. she, um, she, what's that? I said hospice. That's great. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, she's she's willing to do that. Our ILL librarian is willing to do that. But then some people have just kind of like kept their head down and decided that the tech services people don't. Um, but the biggest that I get to, I'm kind of re repeating and circling back around the same thing. The success is that the entire campus gets better service. The library and IT staff communicate better. There's continu continuity and collaboration and records of past solutions. We search that server and system all the time to see what did somebody tell this person that had the same problem. Mm -hmm. um, and that I love. Because we can't hold it all in our heads all the time. We build a, we've built a presence with familiar faces and, and confidence in our system 
Now, mm -hmm. the part about where faculty has confidence in us at, in guiding their teaching, that's still kind of a, a, a piece that's not flushed out at Rhodes. Um, failures, we need IT staff at the desk. We do. I mean, that's my opinion. Um, if Bob were here, we might have, we would, I mean, I would talk with him, I've told him that's what I think needs to happen. Because I think what happens is the librarians are kind of seen as the secretary sometimes. Mm -hmm. We take the IT questions, we answer the ones we can, and then we pass them on. But the IT staff doesn't really understand the interactions that we are having with faculty, staff, students, guests on campus. They, and sometimes they don't understand. They're not walking in our shoes, but we're walking a lot in their shoes. So that's uneven. And that was a, that's a historical decision that the staff, the desk would still hang on to this reference image and librarians would be there. And I think I just talked when Jonathan was there about, you know, do you need an MLS to do this? What does an MLS mean anymore? What are the qualifications to do the kind of work we have set up to do? So the students who work late, late shifts never get trained. They come to sub at Monday morning and they're like, I've never created a ticket. Or they've got a person on the phone, but they're talking to me, asking me everything they say. I'm like, just transfer them to me and I'm gonna show you how to do this. Because there's so much to train them on. And our library's open till the desk is staffed by students till midnight, librarians till 9.30. Um, the library's open till 2 a.m. So we have a lot of hours staffing on that desk. So we did not have success merging all the functions of the help desk until we were explicit with job descriptions. So creating this information services librarian position is what yielded the fully fully functioning staff person on this desk. Uh, you could call that something else, not information services librarian. I think that eventually it needs to be called information specialist, I don't know. There are still issues and types of questions for which people bypass the help desk. That there are still people who don't have faith in it. Um, and then the goals must be clearly defined so the desk is not just a dispatch center, which sometimes that's what it can kind of feel like. Um, I am a liaison to five departments. We have liaisons in the library, and they're not just information services librarians like the the archivist is the history liaison. Our assistant director of the library is music and theater because that's his subject area. Um, so there are weird, there's different things going on. Uh, information services people are this, this faith, but I also ask to come to departmental meetings for my five departments and that's where some of the teaching and learning stuff is, it works. We're trying to make connections and, and do more. So. There's, there's a lot that could be defined better. Um, I think Bob kind of prompted me to put these questions out here. Um, and this is just what you would ask yourself with any, any change you were going to make, I think. Mm -hmm. Especially when you work with the kind of um, small staff that we work with. We, we have to constantly be asking ourselves these questions. I think that's it. So, um, anything? <laughs> I'd like to comment about the job descriptions because mm -hmm. we just integrated all of these functions uh -huh. this year in one place. Uh -huh. At Southwestern. Yes, at mm -hmm. Southwestern. So it is the circulation on the help desk. We also added the campus card and the photograph so that uh -huh. oh, wow. the AV yeah. check out. And yeah. so everything mm -hmm. is called an yeah. info desk yeah. because we didn't want it to just be the help right. desk. Right. One phone number. Yeah. So it's moving and in it's in the library? Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's moving in this sort of direction. Yeah. However, what we <laughs> have is <laughs> somebody sitting there checking out books and somebody else who's right. answering the help desk right. question. And so we're discussing right now and saying, mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. it has to get much smoother right. and integrated. Mm -hmm. The research or reference function is being done by appointments. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it is a thing that somebody could come mm -hmm. there and ask mm -hmm. and end up they're, they're set up with an appointment right. by whoever is the best person to go meet with them at whatever right. time. Including at night, which yeah. has become the interesting one. Yeah. And our librarians would come back and show up at night 
to meet with somebody at 9 p.m. if that yeah. is when the student really needs to connect. Mm -hmm. But I'm very interested in the job description piece because mm -hmm. I think that's got to be you know, the second stage to yeah. try to say, how do you really make this work smoothly? Yeah, and I still think ours isn't written, it's still written very <laughs> vaguely. Um, I am participating in the I ISIS, I don't know, mm -hmm. I can't remember what that stands for, and um, they do bi-weekly Friday sessions using Adobe Connect, and the past one was McAllister talking about their desk. Did anybody watch, you, were, you watched it, um, and they just reconceived their desk and it's big, like ours is just this big wooden right. like, front and then we're behind it. And like if I need to do reference consultation, I ask somebody to pull one of these big, heavy, everything that rose these gorgeous chairs around <laughs> to sit in and it's not exactly easy. Or if there's enough people staffing, I'll take them to my desk so that I can do reference consultation. But they've got it where the desk is square and there's tech services people right. there had, and um, there's a high desk for circula so circulation there too. I think that would be great at Rhodes too because the circulation desk is across from the help right. desk and people are constantly, can I check out a book here? Sure. You know, it's just silly to have to go, oh, <laughs> like point about, you know, I don't know, right. five yards away. That that's the other desk um, that we could all be in the same place as well. Um, I like, yeah. Doing it all. I was going to say, one of the things I'm fascinated with is I spent a lot of time in drawing people in to stay in the Apple Store. Mm -hmm. So that's become the model for me for a lot of this. So right. it's not only the genius bar, which is, which like you said, people yeah. are up and you're sitting up, so you're looking at eye level and there's room to put your stuff. Yeah. But even what you're talking about when you're talking about a reference, when you've got somebody that will come to one of those larger tables because mm -hmm. you're there because you can't figure out how to do this thing in Photoshop. And the person is sitting there with you, next to you, is very much like the same kind of posture and behavior you can have right. for a reference session with yeah. a student or a research session. Yeah. So I think uh, I just recommend hanging out there and mm -hmm. watching. It's mm -hmm. all public, mm -hmm. it's not private. Right. I'm fascinated by the fact that other people listen in mm -hmm. um, while they're waiting, and that's right. not a bad thing. It's one of the reasons why people yeah. like that. Yeah. And I'm trying to say, how could we learn from this in our yeah. institution? Because at McAllister, that big desk um, has a table in the middle where staff come together to have brief and informal exchanges. And our tradition is for the, the staff to go down to this break room by themselves every morning at 10.30 and some people have coffee but most people say you know I'm out tomorrow and they give all this like brief debrief each other and what's going on and um, I don't know why we do that in this hidden place I mean it needs to be where everybody's there together um, and comfortable being right. there and I think somebody was asking about noise levels I mean we already let food and drink in sure. the library the noise level on the main floor is just going to be what it is, I think. Uh, I mean, if you had asked me that five years ago, I would have been like, no, but um, <laughs> I've changed. I've changed. I mean, these exchanges need to happen. The staff needs to be exchanging. It doesn't need to be boisterous all the time, but mm -hmm. the, the communication needs to be there. So. So when I pulled those numbers from from your staff, somehow I got the number for your IT staff, which um, might have been out of out of the core data service. Yeah. So how many librarians do you? How many library staff do you have on top of the 13? There are about 13, 12 to 13 librarians. And see, the fourth. I should also say the fourth position that was just created. Um, our acquisitions librarian retired and then they moved part of what she does to another person who's not a librarian. They basically used that position being vacated to get, give us another information service librarian, which has been a little controversial. Some people raised eyebrows and there's no acquisitions librarian anymore. What do we do? Well, we created an uh, acquisition email address, just generic email address acquisitions at Rhodes, and it's coming to our director and some other administrative people who are handling the subscription um, and the standing orders and uh, then requests come in the way they always have, but they just don't go to that person anymore. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't know if it's the right decision or not. We'll, we'll see uh, how that goes. So, I really don't. I really am not sure. I don't. I don't know. I'm glad to have another of uh, our positions because. There's never going to be less of what we do. So 
ideologically this is what what we're moving towards. So yeah, I've got questions. So this is um many of the presentations this morning have really, really helped me think about what happens um, when somebody comes in the library, right, mm -hmm. or, or wherever the space that the help desk is, is located. I guess that's now made me think about the question of how you get people into the library in the first place, yeah. and I'm wondering about what outreach yeah. um, looks like at the different schools, and if there are, you know, um, models we could talk about, pros and cons, just the way we've been talking about yeah. pros and cons of, of yeah. 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 One thing, you know, I was thinking about with that conversation and you know the one earlier was, I mean, I know like office space in departments is a premium and fought over, but you know, thinking of like shared office space for all these outreach positions. So you have like, mm -hmm. you know, an office in the English department where an instructional technologist, a librarian, an IT person could take their laptop and do commit to doing work there for a day yeah. or an afternoon, mm -hmm. yeah. and mixing that up, and so you're having that cross-pollination between mm -hmm. service groups and also academic departments. Yeah, yeah. being liaisons, we reach out and some departments are very welcoming to, uh, for us to come give a little talk at the beginning of the semester about what's available to them and what are they working on. And and, um, and then I think I was talking with Kim, with Kim about, uh, I try to go to the lectures and the um, candidate talks and all of that in the departments where where I am assigned, and um, that kind of thing is what helps the FaceTime and getting to know people. I finally got the math department. I'm, I'm the math liaison by just the history of things. I finally got them to um, let me come and do research instruction for their senior seminar, which they've always said, like, oh, we don't, you know, we don't need that. We know what we do or whatever. And they finally realized that, you know, because it's their choice. We, we can't make people ask, ask us to come. So I think that everybody was very happy, and a lot of professors came to see, like, oh, what does she do when she, you know, <laughs> oh, we're going to have class over in the library? What is she going to tell us that we don't already know? And they all left feeling like they had learned something. So that is huge. Yeah. I mean, that, that was huge. I was so happy that day. <laughs> Begging for friends in departments. No. Um, it was a big deal. It made everybody see that there are services available that they didn't, you know, yeah. were there. Um, but had getting them in, uh, we do lunch and learns mm -hmm. in the library, and my other, my other presentation is going to be about that. Um, but our library, when it was built, you know, it's got a Starbucks in it, it's got, it's a, it's a draw, it's a place mm -hmm. that people want to be, including faculty, and there are many classroom spaces, dedicated classroom spaces in the library, so faculty have to come in there. They sometimes get assigned to teach, or they want to teach in the library because the teaching spaces are good, mm -hmm. and they know that usually the technology in those rooms isn't going to break because we're, there, we are in that yeah. building, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, the nature of things. So th that's a good thing. Our physical space is, is popular, and that's a good thing. We had a series that a faculty member started at our campus called First Thursday. Um, and every month, it's the first Thursday of every month, and it is honoring faculty scholarship and mm -hmm. what people, or staff scholarship, mm -hmm. it could be mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And so he selects the people to come and speak, and he gives them, I think, five minutes. Yeah. or something, and so we serve, is, uh, I offered to host it in the library, it was done myself, so it is now moved into the library from 4 to 5 or 5.30 on this Thursday. We have a bar with wine, and we have cheese and crackers and the things set up for doing that for the faculty, and it's great because it's interdisciplinary, he mixes it up, so it's really crap, and somebody from math is trying to explain yeah. the paper that they got accepted <laughs> in a way that everybody in the room can understand right. it. But it has, and other faculty come to listen. Yeah. And so this has been a little fabulous. Mind getting a little wine and yeah. doing this, okay. but getting the faculty in right. there and then having conversations around that. It's a great idea. Yeah, and it, and it fits with the purpose of a library celebrating scholarship mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. kind of way as well. 